uh, women with high blood sugar also have increased chance of having a yeast infection or vaginal yeast infections. Welcome to this Spring Life and Health channel. So honey, uh, ladies out there, you don't need sugar. That is what we're talking about. And this is because we're going to explain uh, how high blood sugar affects you specifically women. Also, we're going to talk about some of the suggested solutions. Well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, this is a good place to uh, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Also, we are going to talk about how high blood sugar or diabetes affect infections, how it affects or increases your chance for infections. Also, how uh, high blood sugar affect your menstrual cycle, your periods. We also want to talk about the effects of blood sugar on your sex life. Also, uh, we want to talk about diabetes and, and pregnancy or the effect of blood sugar on, on pregnancy. And lastly, uh, we will talk about the effect of blood sugar on menopause in women. And a lot of this information is adapted from the uh, Centers for Disease Control in the US. So the first one is how does blood sugar affect women in terms of infections? About 50% of women, I should say, uh, would in, in their lifetime get a UTI or urinary tract infection. So women in general, due to their anatomy, 50% of them would definitely have a UTI at least once in their lifetime. When you have high blood sugar, that risk increases to the extent that more women who have diabetes have urinary tract infections or UTIs. Uh, women with high blood sugar also have increased chance of having a yeast infection or vaginal yeast infections. And um, the, the, the reasons for these infections increasing in women with diabetes, uh, I mean, I would say a few. One of them is that poor circulation uh, ensures that they don't have enough circulation in the area that would fight uh, uh, potential microbes that causes infection. The other thing is diabetes itself decreases your, your immune immunity. So your immune system is a little on the downside if you have high blood sugar. So, so women with high blood sugar uh, usually don't fight all diseases as, as, as good as their counterparts that don't have high blood sugar or that don't have diabetes. Now when you talk about yeast infections, uh, that is also because if your blood sugar is not controlled, you, you lose or you pass out urine which contains high amounts of glucose and glucose becomes a substrate for these yeast um, to, to feed on. And so the more you urinate uh, and your urine is filled with sugar, I should say, then the microbes, uh, the yeast that grows down there have something to feed on. So you get um, yeast infections more often than people or women who don't have high blood sugar. And for some women, that is even how their diabetes got diagnosed because they were getting frequent yeast infections and their uh, doctors um, offered to do um, blood glucose tests and then found out that this was due to an uncontrolled high blood uh, sugar or high blood glucose. Now, in general, all infections will be more difficult to fight off in diabetics, but these two are extra for women. With that, this is just some some solutions we can suggest for for this is that we if we try if you have high blood sugar in your woman definitely um, ensure that your blood glucose levels are kept in check. You test more frequently. You're taking your medications. If you are not, if you're on insulin, make sure, make sure that you are using it as properly, and also communicate with your provider or doctor to make sure that you are at a high enough doses to ensure that your blood sugar levels are kept in normal uh, or close to normal as possible to prevent you from getting re these recurrent urinary tract infections. The other suggestion for uh, women in this uh, area would also be to drink more fluids, to drink more fluids just so that it cleans out and clears out the anatomy and ensures that um, infections are minimized. So, and also urinate frequently, don't hold urine until your bladder is full before you go to to pee or to, to, to go to the bathroom to urinate. Uh, just clear out the urine as it comes as much as possible so as to prevent uh, bacterial growth in the bladder and of course uh, cause UTIs. And the other suggestion that I also have on that is uh, for women uh, with uh, this um, high blood sugar levels or recurring infections to also uh, eat or take probiotics, yeah, eating yogurts and 
you know, probiotic supplements would also help populate um, a vaginal area with good bacteria and prevent um, uh, recurrent infections. Uh, it would also help if you drink some um, some juices or some liquids. I should be careful, not juices, uh, but foods that will acidify your urine to prevent microbial growth or to prevent uh, infections from going down down there. And one suggested one is cranberry, cranberry juice. Um, sugarless cranberry juice or natural cranberry juice or even cranberry fruits itself without uh, any added sugar uh, would ensure that you acidify your urine and prevent recurrent infections uh, down there. Now let's move on to the other uh, effect of diabetes on women. On your menstrual cycle, on your menstrual cycle, high blood sugar uh, actually kicks off balance your menstrual cycle, makes it unpredictable. If your blood sugar level is not controlled or if you have diabetes, the blood sugar levels would also affect uh, the way your periods come. And, and so because they, they have heavier menses or heavier periods. The other thing is um, due to you know the hormonal changes in, uh, in women, uh, around the time that you have period, sometimes you may have uh, unexpected food cravings. So you may eat more if you don't control your blood sugar well and you have cravings for more food around that time of the month, then you realize that your periods become out of whack, like either you're going too much or it's taking, it's taking too long for you to go. And the solutions that we suggest for that is also that you be active. Uh, women should be active, especially if, you're high blood, if you have high blood sugar or diabetes, you definitely have to be active, you have to exercise and ensure that you're also watching your diet, ensure you're not taking in too much carbs and too much sugar. And also another thing is to try and get enough sleep, especially around that time. Because when your sleep is disrupted, it, it also disrupts your hormonal cycle and uh, the things get out of whack. And I also suggest that if you're on medications for diabetes, make sure you stick to them and take your medications as directed. Also, if you're on insulin, you also definitely have to make sure that you're using it as you've been told. And uh, uh, for some people, you may notice that around the time that you have your periods, your blood sugar levels go up, go up uh, uh, higher. I mean, if you have paid attention, if that's the case, you can discuss with your doctor, and they may suggest increasing your dose, uh, whether of medication or insulin, around the time of the month, just to ensure that your sugar levels re remain more normal around the time of the month. So the next thing is how blood sugar affects pregnancy. So high blood sugar can uh, bring a lot of problems during pregnancy. Well, before even pregnancy, it is known that um, diabetes or high blood sugar can hinder pregnancy. It can, it can make it harder for you to get pregnant. So if you have diabetes and you want to get pregnant, this is something you want to uh, look out for, that you make sure that your blood sugar level is under control. The second thing is that it can lead to miscarriages. Uh, high blood sugar can lead to miscarriages it can lead to stillbirth and it can also lead to other problems in pregnancy to the extent that you cannot even deliver naturally. So people with diabetes, women with diabetes, more likely to deliver by cesarean section, C-section, than by a vaginal birth. The other thing is that uh, during pregnancy, high blood sugar levels, if your blood sugar levels are higher in, in pregnancy, you are more uh, at risk of getting preeclampsia, which basically is a high blood pressure, which usually comes on during pregnancy. And this can be serious. Sometimes people get strokes out of this. Make sure that you protect yourself when you are pregnant. If you are already diabetic and you are pregnant, make sure that you are in touch with your doctor to ensure that the sugar levels are controlled so that you, pre you prevent preeclampsia and strokes for that matter. Also, high blood sugar levels uh, can lead to uh, the children that are born getting overweight or high birth weight so that the child may be so heavy that uh, I think that's one of the reasons why they usually have to go through C-section instead of natural birth because the, the babies uh, in pregnant uh, women usually have higher weight, especially if the high blood sugar is not controlled. Uh, the child comes out also with challenge because they are overweight. Uh, high blood sugar levels can lead to birth defects. Some babies will be born with a deformation just because their mothers were uh, in an uncontrolled blood sugar level. So blood sugar, high blood sugar levels can lead to birth defects, you know, breathing problems when they are born, as well as um, low sugar 
right after birth. Now, the other thing is that women may not have, or some women may not have diabetes at all, but in pregnancy, they get diabetes. That is what we call gestational diabetes. But all these things that I've been outlined about apply to gestational diabetes. And the solutions that I suggest for people, uh, if you don't have diabetes and you are getting pregnant, just make sure that you work, you work on your weight, make sure you have a normal weight. As a matter of fact, some people try to lose weight when they are planning to get pregnant, just so that their pregnancy will be safer and, uh, and easier, and they would avoid gestational diabetes. So uh, plan for your pregnancy and make sure your, your weight is, is on a normal side, I should say, before pregnancy. Also, uh, have a diet uh, that is consistent with a person who wants to prevent or protect themselves from diabetes when you are pregnant to avoid getting gestational diabetes or if you have diabetes to avoid getting to problems that we have said earlier on. Eat healthy and exercise. Be active before and during pregnancy. We suggest that you be become physically active, moderate, moderate exercises. Uh, there are videos out there that, tell, that shows how pregnant women should exercise. So uh, you watch some of those videos out there or talk to your doctor about what safe exercises you can have just to ensure that you are active through your pregnancy. The other thing is that uh, if you are uh, in diabetes, if you are a woman, you get pregnant and you got gestational diabetes, you also have to be checked within four to 12 weeks after pregnancy just to make sure that the diabetes is, uh, is gone. Uh, if it's not, they got to be treated. It's, you got to be treated still to ensure that you return to normal. But if you watch your weight and you keep, you keep a safe weight during pregnancy and after pregnancy, typically the diabetes will go away if you were not already diabetic before pregnancy. We're going to go to the other one before we go and talk about diabetes and sex in women. So the other one we want to talk about is menopause. How does diabetes affect menopause? Oh, as we know, menopause is basically a period where estrogen levels, the hormone, you know, the major hormone in women, estrogen levels drop because uh, of you know, your aging and stuff like that. Because that happens, blood sugars becomes unpredictable, especially if you have diabetes, you know, unpredictable ups and downs. You may find out that if you were diabetic before you got into menopause, it may be initially a little more challenging to control your blood sugar compared to when you were not in menopause. Also, because of estrogen levels going low, some women gain weight. And you, as we can tell from our previous videos, weight gain or obesity, and overweight, being overweight are all risk factors for diabetes. A woman, some women can be pushed into diabetes during menopause if they do not have diabetes. Some women who also had diabetes and got into menopause may find out that their blood sugar levels are even higher and demands more attention or more monitoring to be able to make sure that they are safe. And menopause brings along with it, as you know, the night sweats, you know, the heart flashes and uh, and the inability to keep a consistent sleep, all those things work together to affect a person who is already trying to uh, keep a normal blood sugar level. So they affect blood sugar levels in uh, women with menopause. As we know, menopause also leads to uh, vaginal dryness and so sexual effects that also are not pleasant. So this leads us into the last effect of diabetes on women, which is the sex life of a diabetic woman. Diabetes can lower interest in sex in women. The other thing is that diabetes also will also decrease the ability to enjoy sex. Two things right off the bat is that it will, in, it, will, it will decrease your interest for sex and then also your ability to enjoy sex. The reasons are that it is maybe due to vaginal dryness again, it may make sex uncomfortable and sometimes even more even painful. And if that happens, then a woman will naturally not be willing to uh, be interested in sex nor enjoy sex. So this is because of the reduced blood flow. You know, circulation problems are something that is common with diabetic patients. So women who have diabetes, especially for prolonged periods, may have reduced blood flow to their sexual organs and also to other places which are pleasurable places for the women. And for that matter, they do not have interest in sex. The other thing is that they may have nerve damage 
nerve damage as we know with when we talk about peripheral neuropathy in, in diabetes so long-standing diabetes leading or high blood sugar levels that are not controlled over periods lead to painful um, fingertips we call it numbness and tingling and all those things in your stream in your extremities and incidentally your vaginal organs also have nerve endings which get affected so in that case you wouldn't enjoy sex so sex becomes just sex you don't have any pleasure out of sex and that is a cause of diabetes due to nerve damage and then also hormonal changes including in uh, pregnancy and also in menopause so we come back full circle so if you are a woman and you are diabetic along with um, being pregnant you may not be able to enjoy sex or being having menopause would also bring along with it the dryness and the discomfort and all those night sweats and hot flashes that uh, basically make you not interested in sex so diabetes affect women very very negatively in all areas but in this mother's day we want to have uh, a woman enjoy themselves and therefore i'm going to suggest a few things that would help women the first solution that i suggest is that you have to talk with your doctor and your partner if you're going through any of such things the worst thing you could do is to keep it to yourself and not only do you starve your husband or your partner but then you also don't seek help so at least you got to discuss it with your partner and with your doctor for solutions the second thing is uh, uh regular vaginal lubricants or over the counter shelves that helps ky jelly and all those gels that you send they sell in the uh, over-the-counter products that you can use especially if your uh, discomfort or your uh, disinterest in sex is due to dryness the other suggestion that i have is also to have a regular routine exercises exercises reinvigorate the body and uh, bring some hormones release and it uh, will make you enjoy sex more so uh, regular exercises and there are also specific exercises that actually improves a woman's desire for sex so you can look for those and also do them the other thing that i also suggest is that uh, you control your blood sugar levels if you have diabetes already try and keep it as close to your target level as possible we know that fasting blood glucose is supposed to be around 90 to 110 to try and uh, keep it close to that as possible not just for when you want to have sex or enjoy sex but it's got to be a cons on a consistent basis when you have a, your a1c levels checked you have to have less than seven or less than six if you don't know about a1c don't worry about it all you got to remember is that you make sure that your blood sugar levels are close to the target number fasting blood glucose of 90 to 110 all the time as much as possible in that case uh, the, the bad effects of, of high blood sugar on your sex life may eventually subside and then also we want to talk about your diet there are certain specific natural diets that would also help boost your your sex life and sex drive and, and increase your uh, desire for sex if you have high blood sugar or if you are diabetic generally whole grain foods organic foods greens greens lots of greens and less sugar definitely no soft drinks no alcohol no sugary drinks but obviously increasing your green and natural uh, organic products and then adding exercise to it would also help i hope you enjoy this and on this mother's day we want to wish all the women uh, who are watching this and we're going to watch it in the future happy mother's day enjoy motherhood and we're proud of what you do and what you continue to do. You love it. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as you're so prosperous.